Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF Mic Wave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host Eric Keim. In this episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the January radar and antennas themed issue. As a reminder, the cover feature is written by Aravant about evaluating testing applications for antennas, so it covers the various ways that you can test them. We covered the technical articles in the last episode, so Eric, what do we have for our product features? Well, we have three this month. We have my cable from China describing an 8x8 Butler matrix uh, that works in bands from around 600 megahertz to 7.25 gigahertz. And uh, with the growth of phased array antennas in commercial and defense applications, the passive beamforming that Butler matrices offer uh, is becoming attractive. We also have SignalHound announcing an integrated phase noise and VCO tester. And as modulation schemes and conversion requirements evolve, a stable signal is even more essential. And a key characteristic of a stable signal is phase noise. So this new piece of equipment offers a more compact, simpler, uh, less costly, high performance solution. Uh, and finally, we have Tarazi from Sweden introducing E-band waveguide filters. And uh, of course, E-band has become very popular because of the channel bandwidth. And there are existing filters, but uh, the Tarazi solution in the 71 to 86 gigahertz band are much smaller and lighter than competitive products. And they're also leveraging these packaging capabilities in system and chip package approaches that use silicon substrates for active parts. So I expect more announcements from Tarazi in the future. And yeah, we had a couple of tech briefs. One was a fully space qualified quad output TCXOs, and that's from QTech. And we also had an ultra low profile, ultra wideband antenna from LeanCon. So uh, turning to the news on the acquisition front, Micros Components closed their acquisition of Integra Technologies. And Integra is a outsourced semiconductor assembly and test post-processing provider focused on high reliability applications and in markets. So don't confuse it with the RF power devices, Integra Technologies. And this will um, further positions for Micros as a leader in the uh, OSAT services and further broadens their portfolio. And Acousis will pursue a strategic sale of its business through a voluntary Chapter 11 process after losing their legal case to Corvo. In the last days of the Biden administration, they awarded a lot of government contracts to the wireless industry via the CHIPS Act the Department of Commerce, National Telecommunications, and Information Administration awarded more than $117 million in the second batch of grants from the Public Wireless Supply Chain Innovation Fund's second notice of funding opportunity. The batch of awards will support projects focused on open radio innovation and commercialization, and applicants were required to partner with a mobile network operator to help produce products that will be commercially viable. So Airspan Networks, Analog Devices, Epicis Science, New York University, Rampart Communications, SecureG, and Skylark Wireless all received significant awards. And also then the same track, uh, NYU Tandon and collaborating institutions and industry partners were awarded nearly $10 million to develop next generation communications technology. And this project is dubbed Salsa for spectrically Agile Large Scale Arrays, and it's funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce's National Telecommunications and Information Administration also, and it's meant to advance U.S. leadership and open, secure communications infrastructure. And so Salsa aims to create advanced wireless systems that operate in the upper mid-band spectrum, since that's kind of the new area of uh, expertise there. Princeton University will develop considerable uh, advances in the RFIC area and will lead the development of the proposed radio microchip. Rutgers University's Wind Lab will provide critical testing facilities for the project. Nokia will evaluate Salsa technology for cellular networks. And Analog Devices will provide specialized radio hardware that helps the project's wireless technology connect to Open RAN. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, I see that ABI Research released a 5G fixed wireless access CPE vendor competitive assessment report. And uh, in that report, they found that ZTE continues to main what they call a dominant uh, position in the 5G fixed wireless access market. Uh, in their analysis, ZTE has been the global leader in fixed wireless access and mobile broadband CPE for four years now. And they attribute this success to what they say is an expansive presence in over 160 countries 
49 overseas service centers, a comprehensive product portfolio catering to diverse user scenarios and an unwavering commitment to technological innovation. And that was a bit surprising given the ongoing uh, trade dust-ups between the U.S. and some of its allies in China. Uh, but take a look at that report for more details. And ID TechX found that in 2023, 71% of new cars were shipped with front radars, uh, and in the U.S., with the growing regulation on automotive safety requirements, uh, that percentage was 90%. So in their estimation, there isn't much more room for growth in front radars, uh, but they believe that side radars are still growing quickly, with only 40% of new vehicles shipped with short-range radar-powered blind spot detection systems. And uh, blind spot detection applications dominate market demand for short range radars. Uh, and even though the report isn't bullish on front radars, it does identify front short range radar applications like junction automatic emergency braking as a growth area. Autonomy and autonomous driving will also be drivers of side radar. And uh, they also found that next generation radars are now being deployed on vehicles with much higher resolution and performance than their predecessors which were known as 4D radar sensors. The main change they identify is an increase in the number of virtual channels, as most radars have only 12 or fewer virtual channels. And new radars, like those coming from Mobileye and Arby, are coming to market with thousands of virtual channels, and that significantly increases the resolution. So I'm missing out. I don't have radar on my car, so I'm going to have to upgrade. So uh, turning to events, I wanted to do some more coverage of CES since we only partially covered it in the last episode. As mentioned, Corvo took smart living to the next level at CES with cutting edge technologies that reimagine how we interact with our homes, devices, and vehicles. Their ultra wideband, matter, Wi-Fi, sensor, and power solutions enable safer, enhanced, and automated user experiences. So they're really leading the charge in this area. Let's take a look at a video now from their booth. Hello everybody and welcome at the Corvo Experience at CES 2025. Let's have a look at our exhibits. The buzz around the CES is incredible. The whole vibes here is really about technology and focus about the human-centric approach. At the Corvo booth we've got today a demo, we are able to detect your breathing rate and heart rate real-time at the distance, demonstrating the ultra-wideband radar capabilities with the algorithms. To be able to detect the person at any environment, whether it is the conference room, whether it is the warehouse, in the home living environment, the non-invasive elderly care monitoring. To be able to know where the person is, how the person is sleeping, how the person is moving, falling, and the genuine vital signs doing of the person. On on the other hand, imagine in the warehouse, the machine has to stop when it starts sensing people approaching. So there are different sets of applications to be able to capture the vital signs of the person for the safety features. Learning about all the use cases is also helping us to make better products in our roadmap. We deliver great platforms for wireless connectivity. So a smart home is a collection of different types of control systems for your lighting, for your security. But one of the key elements that we bring in this is technology that enables to have all this concurrent coexistence of all of the wireless. So that is completely transparent for the end user. And they understand the value that it brings. If they use Corvo technology, they shouldn't worry about installation or operating the system. It will just work. It's great to be back again. We're excited to be here and show what we're doing with Corvo. Particularly in the automotive space, we're able to talk about secure access and a number of other things that we've been working on. What you're going to see is our ability to really sense a person in and around that car. The car knows it's you and it knows exactly the angle that you're coming from for safety reasons and unlock only that door. In addition, we've got child presence detection so that you can actually pick up even a heartbeat in as far as a third row seat back in the car. So as we all know that that's going to be a new safety standard coming out in the coming years where you're going to want to have that child presence detection. This demo here will show you sort of the technology that makes that possible. What's the next trend? What problems are yet unsolved that we can solve with the technology that we offer specifically at radio frequency? Yeah, Corvo is definitely leading the way in smart living wireless solutions, so we'll keep an eye out for more coverage of that. I also wanted to cover some of the cool tech that came out of CES. There was a 360 degree AI powered body scanning health mirror that can scan your heart, weight, and metabolic health 
So that's a really cool implementation of AI, but it's only in the conceptual stage right now. We had holiday glasses, which are smart glasses with a 3.5 internal monochrome display, and it's equipped with an AI agent that can listen to conversations, answer questions during meetings, and do live translations. So I really need a pair of those. But to me, you know, NVIDIA stole the show. They had Project Digitus, which is a $3,000 personal supercomputer that's a thousand times more powerful than the average laptop. They had Cosmos, an open source, open weight video world model designed for the upcoming age of robotic source, and a data center super chip with 72 Blackwell GPUs and 1.4 exaflops. So all I can say is, wow, that's some power. Eric, how about you for CES? What did you see that was cool? Well, there was a product from Swipit that charges your smartphone in just two seconds. I mean, I can't get my phone out of my pocket in less than two seconds. But with this product, you insert your phone with the compatible battery phone case on it into their hub, and your case battery gets swapped out for another fully charged 3,500 milliamp hour battery that should last you a full charge. And TVs are always big at CES, and a common thread among new TV models seems to be AI integration. Samsung's latest lineup of TVs takes advantage of AI upscaling to make older content look better. Uh, LG's AI-powered TV technology includes features like AI-powered recommendations with voice recognition, an AI chat box, uh, AI search, and an LG AI concierge. Uh, Lenovo introduced a 14-inch laptop with a rollable display that extends upwards over 16 inches. The expandable display is triggered by hitting a button on the keyboard, but it also responds by holding your palm out in front of the device and then raising or lowering it to activate the display. So as always, some exciting things were introduced at CES. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsors are RFMW and Corvo. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products and now power management products. When you start your next design, consider the multiple product lines. Corvo products are at work connecting, protecting, and powering the planet. They bring core RF and power technologies and solutions to mobile, infrastructure, IoT, defense and aerospace, and power management markets. And remember, as an industry member, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Also, please like us on YouTube and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching this episode, and please join us next time for another episode of Frequency Matters.